Hi, my name's Peter, and I'm going to talk about how I ended up in a TV documentary about going to the South Pole. Basically, what happened was I spotted an online advert asking for people to apply for the trip of a lifetime. A TV company was making a documentary programme about this and had left one place on the expedition for a member of the public to take part. I applied, as in my work as an engineer, I'd worked with an environmentalist who'd really inspired me with his tales of the South Pole. To my great surprise, I was accepted. The TV company were keen to make the documentary unusual, for example, concerning the transport. The idea was that we'd travel on skis, rather than using dogs and sledges, as many people have done before us. In fact, the expedition turned out to be much, much harder than I ever thought it would be. Before I went, I thought the most challenging thing would be the physical toll on my body. And yes, it was incredibly challenging. But even though I wasn't alone, there were five others in the group, it was the loneliness I found the hardest to take. I really missed my family and friends, especially my wife. The Antarctic trip took us seven weeks in all, and we were travelling across an icy wilderness in sub-zero temperatures. We kept going for up to 16 hours a day, and we burnt 9,000 calories each and every day. It was crucial that those calories were replaced, but our main preoccupation was the constant need to make water from the snow so we didn't become dehydrated. We carried snack packs of high-calorie food like cheese, salami, nuts and chocolate, and we cooked dehydrated meals with loads of fat for breakfast and dinner. It was incredible that fairly soon into the journey I had lost the weight I had deliberately put on before I started. Despite this, I didn't suffer loss of concentration or motivation. However, by the time we reached the South Pole, I was beginning to suffer from exhaustion and I was afraid that my toes would be permanently damaged by the freezing temperatures. Luckily, the special gloves I wore saved my fingers from having the same problem. My teammates suffered too. Of course, we all found the temperature difficult to take, but one of our group, John, suffered the most health problems. He developed a chest infection, and the altitude didn't help that at all. Neither did the fact that we rarely had a rest because we needed to keep walking. This took us all by surprise, as John had been the fittest and most well-prepared member of the team before we started. At various points on the journey, we had breaks. At the halfway point, we were examined by doctors and John was nearly forbidden from continuing. He was only given permission to carry on at the last minute. If he hadn't been allowed to carry on, that would have been the end of the whole adventure. Lots of people have asked me why I went. It's a difficult question to answer. When I was travelling, all I could think about was getting through each day and then when we got to the South Pole... Rather than feeling a sense of achievement, I actually felt relief. It was an amazing experience. It's so incredible when you think that we survived for so long in such a physically and mentally demanding environment, which I can only call alien. I don't think I'll want to go back there for quite some time. Now you will hear part two again. That is the end of part two.